China is it crazy? A hydroelectric plant in the Gobi Desert was constructed over the course of 14 years. The hydroelectric plant is known as the second Three Gorges Dam in China. Dot it is crucial to the regreening and agricultural growth of arid regions of Xinjiang, China. The Gobi Desert in our country is often lifeless, although China's deserts have various topographies. In the desert, towns, high-speed railroads, and even dams coexist with oases and golden sand. Even if in terms of scale, it is not as good as the Three Gorges Dam, it is impossible to conceive how tough it is to construct a hydroelectric plant in the Gobi Desert. But there is no denying that the Desert Hydropower Station is an amazing human endeavor. The hydroelectric facility is situated in China's legally autonomous province of Xinjiang. What sort of location is this? Cotton is grown in Xinjiang, thus many people are familiar with it. It is the second biggest cotton grower in the world and produces more than 20% of the cotton used in clothing. The China-Europe Railway Express's major departure location is Xinjiang. It is a significant trading hub in China and shares borders with eight other nations. There are 1.3 million square kilometers of desert Gobi in this region, and the year-round dry weather significantly inhibits the growth of agriculture. However, Xinjiang's winters are extremely cold and the region badly needs heating. People in this area mostly utilized coal for energy in the past, which resulted in significant air pollution. China started making plans to construct a hydroelectric facility for Xinjiang in 2006. The hydropower plant's 2.2 billion kilowatt-hour annual power generating capacity is intended to save 883,100 tons of conventional coal and eliminate 175,300 tons of TO2 emissions. The power consumption issue in the four prefectures of southern Xinjiang has been totally resolved by the grid-linked power generation of all units in the project, allowing the residents of southern Xinjiang to consume cleaner energy. The distribution of the Grand River's discharge over the course of a year can be significantly altered on the assumption that the Tar River will get an average yearly water supply of 330 million cubic meters. When combined with the planned embankment, it can successfully control floods in upstream mountainous areas and raise the flood control standard of the downstream essential protection objects from less than 20 years to 50 years. Construction on Xinjiang's distinctive Yang River is where the Water Conservancy project is situated. The local community depends heavily on this river, which is also one of Xinjiang's primary water supplies. This southern Xinjiang region's mother river has been irrigating a total area of more than 6.5 million MU for countless years. This river is essential to the survival and livelihood of the majority of people in Xinjiang. However, before the dam was completed, the river was quite erratic and frequently experienced floods as a result of issues like mountain snowmelt. Additionally, the water flow into the park and river varies greatly throughout the year, with more than 60% of the total amount flowing from June to August. More than 90% of the local rural labor force will be involved in flood management during the flood season, and at least tens of millions of dollars will be invested annually, which is a huge burden. Additionally, this river's yearly flow distribution is likewise unsteady. When irrigation requires water, there is not enough water in the river, which results in drought. To pump water, people had to dig wells, which added to the strain on farmers and seriously harmed the nearby agriculture, settlements, roads, communication infrastructure, and electricity infrastructure. To address the issues of floods, droughts, and power outages in rural parts of the Yorkin River Basin, as well as to enhance the river basin's natural biological environment and advance the sustainable growth of the local economy and society. On the river, relevant Chinese authorities chose to construct a hydroelectric plant, comparable to the Three Gorges project. The geological environment of Xinjiang is significantly different from that of inland China, hence it ran into several issues when it first started to be built. In Xinjiang, the expertise that Chinese engineers have obtained in inland regions is utterly useless, thus new technologies must be investigated before construction can begin. For instance, the river water seepage is a highly critical issue because of the unique local soil condition. To remedy this issue, Chinese engineers constructed more than 100 meters of overburden. What impact did the labor-intensive dam have on the local population? This dam's design officially began in 2006, and construction took 14 years. 
After it was finished, the people who lived in the distinctive Yang River Basin benefited greatly. The unique Yang River flood issue was entirely handled once the dam was finished. Flood management efforts are no longer required to be made annually by local homeowners, and other facilities may likewise relax the required criteria. Relying on the dam's enormous capacity for storage and the plan to keep water in storage during the wet season and release it during the dry season. The unique Yang River's imbalance yearly flow distribution issue has also been fully resolved. The hydropower plant significantly raised the local agriculture's irrigation rate from less than 40% to more than 75%, even during the dry season. It essentially satisfies the local population's requirement for agricultural irrigation during the dry season and significantly aids the growth of regional agriculture. A sizable power plant that can produce energy has also been erected at the dam to help the local power supply problem. More importantly, the building of the dam has renewed interest in China among other nations. In order to maintain the natural environment of the dam, it has enabled Chinese engineers to gather a great deal of useful knowledge that will enable China to undertake massive infrastructure projects in regions with harsher conditions in the future. This year, the Water Conservancy Project's construction business completed the work of multiplication and release for 2022 by releasing 500,000 fish fry. Since they are only found in Xinjiang, all fry are second-class protected fish species in China. Six kilometers downstream of the dam is where the primary discharge point is located. These fish were formerly found across the Darien River Basin, but for a variety of causes, their population has severely decreased. Restoring the local indigenous fish population, preserving biodiversity, and ensuring ecological balance and sustainable development all depend greatly on fish breeding and release. It is known that the building business has already performed aquatic ecological monitoring, marking, and release work, among other tasks, and will also optimize and adapt based on the findings of long-term monitoring. Hydropower plants serve a variety of purposes, including energy production, flood control, irrigation, and ecological protection, particularly in the management of deserts and the growth of agriculture. In 2021, the project will supply the lower levels of the Darien River with 348 million cubic meters of water more than 78 million cubic meters than in 2020, fed by the natural water source. Desert plants are incredibly vibrant, including the common yew, Franca, Pollock, Ceylon, Tamarisk, etc. Additionally, the continual ecological water transfer has revived the historic settlement along the Dorian River by increasing natural species like hares and yellow sheep. The sense of security and well-being of those who live near the shore has steadily improved as the natural environment has improved. Additionally, the Yorkin River flooding has been entirely rectified, and protection criteria for significant protective items in the river's lower reaches have been enhanced for 30 years. Additionally, it can raise the irrigation rate from less than 50% to 75% while irrigating more than 6.3 million additional acres of land. Additionally, a major rise in grain production will occur close to the watersheds of the three states in southern Xinjiang, which would help over 6 million people. The hydropower station's ecological water supply operation is currently ongoing right now. Additionally, agriculture in Xinjiang now employs sophisticated technology as well as cutting-edge planting and irrigation techniques rather than small-scale human production. These actions have transformed Xinjiang from a desert with little access to water into an oasis. The region currently has the biggest agricultural reclamation group in the world, as well as China's largest tomato, pepper, and cotton production reserves and gardens. The largest amount of arable land is in China, with 223 million mu. The cotton and fruit industries are the most well-known among them, and their agricultural strength is not awful. Years of experience have shown that as long as water conservation grows to a high level, regional industry, other building projects, and local agriculture and animal husbandry may also flourish to high levels. In light of the uneven water resources in Xinjiang, water conservation programs are crucial. It is believed that there were just three reservoirs present when Xinjiang was initially freed in 1949. Xinjiang has 466 reservoirs with a total irrigated area of 39.1 million MU in 1978. Xinjiang had 528 reservoirs as of 2018 with an irrigated area of 74, 
0.055 million MU. Of course, China's directives continue after this. There is a demand for increased water resources in Xinjiang's dry region. China will soon be constructing additional hydroelectric facilities. More people will gain from it as time goes on. We may also witness additional sand deserts transforming into oasis in this region of Xinjiang. Share your opinion in comments. Also, click on this video to watch about another shocking project.